minus four, three, two, one, zero. If we want to, we can leave your friends behind because your friends don't dance. And if they don't dance, well, they're no friends of mine. We can dance. We can dance. Everything's out of control. Wow. We can dance. We can dance. They're doing it from pole to pole. Thank you, Agent Mobius. Bibbidi bobbidi bacon. This is the Intergalactic Boombox. Welcome, guys, gals, and non binary gender pals. Kudos to Brad Kelly at Color World for his version of Ladies and Gents for 2021. And non-binary. I know you've heard me talk about podcasting 2.0 and it's like, oh God, Kyle, shut up. You got to go to newpodcastapps.com. Just do it. And you could be a member of the Sat Cats Club. Sats meaning Satoshis. People who stream sats as they listen back on a Podcasting 2.0 app. Shoutouts to the actual Podcasting 2.0 podcast. Adam and Dave actually mentioned me and looked at a clip of me saying, Boost! from a previous episode. That's so cool. Boost referring to a manual donation sent during playback on the Podcasting 2.0 enabled app, such as Podfriend or the browser-based CurioCaster. With either of those apps, Podfriend or CurioCaster, you can now even send a custom message with the Boost donation. Dave Jones actually sent the message, hope you get this. Sure you get And if you're set up to stream sats as you listen to this show, do me a solid and send a custom message with a Boost. It could be any size. I want to know who all is supporting the Boombox with crypto. Looking at the Twitter feed at Boombox Pod, Dreb Scott says, every time I listen to the podcast, I bleed my wallet of sats from boosting via Podfriend and have to reload my wallet. Love this podcast. Love Podcasting 2.0, streaming sats. That's direct to podcasters. Hashtag go podcasting. And for those who dig old school, like PayPal donations, Musical Mike sent $10 to the show. Thank you, Mike. Check the show notes on how to get set up to do the whole sats thing. I'll give you a special shout out. You'll be in the Sat Cats Club. Question of the week. Yes, will you get the OLED Nintendo Switch? Technically, no, if you didn't pre-order, which ran out almost immediately. 7-inch OLED switch, 64 gigs internal storage, enhanced audio, a wired LAN port, dock, adjustable stand. It's coming out for a few lucky people October 8th for 350 bucks. If you wanted it, were you able to pre-order one? It's kind of like PS5 all over again. Matt Swider on Twitter is a good Twitter feed to follow for the latest in-stock alerts. It is humanity versus the bots. Or bow to the scalper lords of eBay and drop up to, you know, six, $700. Don't do that. Are you going to get the OLED Nintendo Switch or hold out for Valve's Steam Deck? Check in my Discord, discord.gg slash Kyle Bear. Jeff Biscuit says, OLED or Steam Deck? I'm out here still hunting for a PS5, my good sir. Portable Steam seems interesting. I wonder if you could play your full library or just some select games. I believe Razer also made a PC portable. Nintendo, I feel, is just sort of randomly floundering since the Switch isn't selling like it was and it's getting up in age. I feel you, Jeff. I I feel like it's a missed opportunity to go full 4K. But you sacrifice battery life if you do it. I get it. Eric Flynn says, I'm not going to buy the OLED Switch because I already have a Switch and it works fine. I'm with you, man. I don't have the money to buy any new game consoles every time a Plus or a Pro version comes out. Chiu on the Discord says, I have no interest in either right now the deck, or the Switch. My Switch still works well, and I don't play very many Steam games. Now it's time to pose a new question of the week. What movie are you looking forward to the most? For me, Dune. What about you? Discord.gg slash Kyle Bear to answer on the Discord, or you can go to my pod page and leave a voicemail directly on the website. If you do that, include your name and where you're from, and I could use the little clip here on the next shoe. <laughs> So we were talking about Steam Deck. Yep, Valve announced its supposed console killer, the Steam Deck, which also has a 7-inch touchscreen, but it's LCD, not OLED. So Switch actually has the advantage there visually. But the specs for the Steam Deck, they're really impressive, man. 16 gigs of RAM under the hood, 800p resolution with a 60 hertz refresh rate. Battery life of up to 8 hours, depending on the game. More buttons and triggers than a Switch. The Steam OS is there, but you can delete it and run Windows instead if you want to. You can hook it up to another monitor, a mouse, and a keyboard. If you want more memory, yeah, you can go 64 gigs, 256, 512, or even add more with a micro SD. Now, like the Switch OLED, the Valve Steam Deck is completely sold out of pre-orders, but it does begin to ship in December, again, for the chosen few. But if you haven't reserved one yet, and you're able to, your order will not ship. 
until, say, uh, 2023. This past week, rich guys spent a few minutes and obscene amounts of money that could have been better spent on helping humanity, but by gum, they lived their dreams. Among the crew, Dr. Evil, I mean Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon. He launched his Blue Origin crotch rocket into space and a ton of Twitter memes, too. Lovingly compiled on Mashable, Stephen Colbert said, Jeff Bezos was in space for five minutes, or as it's known on the Amazon warehouse, you're allotted break time for a 16-hour day. Mike Scollins said, quick, everyone in the warehouse, use the bathroom. Big Cat says, congrats to Jeff Bezos on his successful rocket launch, and also for totally not overcompensating for something. Yeah, have you seen this rocket, man? Drew McGarry says, the space penis is aloft. And Liz Plank says, sure, flying to space is cool, but have you ever tried paying income tax? Incoming! South of the Rockies, you are on the air. Boombox. That's intergalactic boombox. Whatever. Who is this? My name is Karen. Of course. Karen Complainer. Funny. And I want to speak to your manager. This is a podcast, not a store? Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. I was just sipping on my bougie cold brew, and I take massive Dolores Umbridge with your judgy judge face. Well, first of all, it's just Umbridge. Second of all, I'm surprised you even know that word. Third of all, Dolores Umbridge is a Harry Potter character. Lastly, what did I do? You might listen here. Don't be hating on Bozo for going to space. He has always been my favorite clown. And Pennywise is a close second. But that's not neither here or there, okay? What did he ever do to you, Mr. Man? I don't have time for this. You know what, Karen, just hang on. Let me transfer you to my manager, okay? Uh, please hold. Okay, fine. And so Karen Complainer lived the rest of her life in the Sarlacc Pit of On Hold, where she will be slowly digested over a thousand years. Earning nearly $2 million at the box office during a pandemic is no small feat, especially for a documentary, Roadrunner, a film about Anthony Bourdain. For those who don't know, he was a popular globe-hopping chef with hit shows on CNN and the Travel Channel, and he tragically took his own life in 2018. The doc has great reviews, but what sticks out like a sore thumb is director Morgan Neville's choice to use AI to recreate Bourdain's voice to read his own email. On top of that, there's no disclaimer for the viewer. Now, we've known reality TV has been scripted for years, but things like this definitely chip away at the integrity of the documentary genre. What was Neville's thoughts on the matter? Quote, we can have a documentary ethics panel about it later, unquote. Jeez, I'm going to go have a Klondike bar. No, they're not a sponsor. Popular streamers are making bank streaming online crypto casinos. Thing is, even just playing on any browser in the U.S. logged onto sites such as Stake or DualBits is illegal. Twitch Terms of Service bans illegal activity in general, but that's too broad a definition currently, so uh, popular crypto streams are jumping through that loophole like being able to watch Netflix from another country, VPNs can access these international websites. You bet Bitcoin and other cryptos with these online casino gaming sites. Popular streamers get endorsement deals all the time. And perhaps not shockingly, sponsors can end up basically funding the stream, paying the streamer ludicrously high amounts of cash per hour. Wheel of morality, turn, turn, turn. Tell us the lesson that we should learn. Let's promote gambling to a large audience who are mostly underage. What could possibly go wrong? We may be a streaming society, but physical media will never die. How do we know? Because there's more Blu-rays coming. And 4K and all that stuff. And some of these titles are just on Blu-ray. So I'm going to stick to that since uh, there's a lot of people that still haven't adapted 4K. Come on, what are you waiting for, guys? What you can see on the store shelves this week or the coming weeks. A Quiet Place 2. American Gods, season three. I believe that's the final season. If you haven't been watching it on Stars, it's a really, really cool show. Spiral from the Book of Saw. Star Trek Discovery, season three. Getting a physical release, also available in a steelbook. Man, I'm a sucker for steelbooks, dude. I have so many Marvel steelbooks, and I hardly ever take them out, but they sure do look cool. Uh, the Herculoids. You want to go really old school, like 80s cartoons? The Herculoids, complete series. If you're an anime fan and like some old school fun, Razafon, Steelbook, complete collection. Lupin the Third, Return of Paikal. Hope I'm reading that right. I might have even done bit part voices in the show. I don't know. <laughs> if you're into reissues and say, man, I can't find this movie, it's out of print, 
Well, no longer the case for a classic Christian Bale sci-fi from the early aughts. I'm talking about Equilibrium. Sean Bean's in there. Guess what happens to him? If you're a Kevin Smith fan, reissues of Clerks and Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back and Tom Hardy Venom. And in the first week of August, you got Fire Force Season 2, Part 1, or El Hazard, The Magnificent World for the Animu fans. And of course, Disney's Luca, who doesn't live on the second floor. Oh gosh, look at the time. Uh, that's all the time we have, boys and girls and non-binary. Check the show notes so you can get in the Sat Cats Club, learn how to donate Satoshis on a Next Generation Podcasting 2.0 app, answer the question of the week on the pod page or on discord.gd slash Bear. And to quote the great Buckaroo Banzai, no matter where you go, there you are. See you on the flippity floppity. <laughs>